My name is Sarah Brown Wessling. I'm a high school English teacher at Johnston High School in Johnston, Iowa. Getting up in the morning and going to school never feels like a job to me. My students fuel me in the most amazing ways. I hope that they will be lifelong learners. I hope that they will be able to find their passions and go pursue them. The first thing I would say to parents as these new assessments are being rolled out is to take a deep breath. The idea is that they will replace the assessments that have already been in place. We have new assessments because we have different standards, and the standards are promoting skills like critical thinking, problem solving, being able to reason and explain that reasoning. We need a, an assessment that really matches those standards. The easiest way to see the changes in the assessments is to actually look at them. So let's take a look at Smarter Balanced Assessment for fifth grade in math. Here, students are given a real world problem in which they need to find the most effective solution using critical thinking and reasoning skills. They also need to construct a model of the community garden. Now using their answer from question one, students then need to apply what they know about adding and subtracting fractions to find what is left over. In this question, students need to write an equation to represent the entire area of the garden applying their analytical and reasoning skills. A simple volume question now requires students to write their answer instead of just choosing a correct one. They can even manipulate images to illustrate volume. So that's math, but what about English? Well, it's actually pretty similar. Let's take a look. Here, students read a text and then click on sentences or words that best support an idea or argument. In this question, students write open-ended short answers in text boxes so they can be evaluated not only on their ability to understand a text, but also how well they can analyze it and support their claims with evidence from that text. Questions include various media as well. The world-famous Leaning Tower of Pisa. Here, students listen to a presentation and then answer a series of questions about what they've learned. They'll even be asked to evaluate which websites would be likely to provide helpful information when researching a paper on the Grand Canyon. What I really like about these assessments is, first of all, the way that they match the standards that we're already teaching. The second thing is the way they're asking questions differently. They're asking students to demonstrate their mathematical reasoning skills. They're prompting students to make compelling arguments. They are asking students to work with a diverse set of texts and synthesize those. These are all the skills we know students need in the real world. The results of these assessments can be used by parents and teachers alike to really figure out where students are at in their continuum of learning. So for some students, that means we might be able to decide they need a little bit more help. For other students, we may learn that they need to be pushed a little bit and they need to be challenged by going deeper into a subject matter. We need to be able to understand how students are continually working and struggling with these challenging skills. So we want students to take these assessments not so that we can tell them that they're good or bad or they got it right or wrong. We want them to take these assessments so that it can inform instruction. If you have more questions, check out the website beelearninghero.org where you can get tips to help support your child, information on the assessments, practice assessments, and a lot of other great resources as well.